All right, today is the day and we just pulled the tub out of the molds because we have finished doing some laminations and that's what we're gonna show you today. Trying to stiffen up those front A pillars. They're about a half an inch of solid single filament or unidirectional filament in there. So they're pretty stiff in the A pillars themselves, but the connections and that is all got enough leverage that it's flexing still. And I'm wondering, well, I'm not wondering, but I know that when we add some stiffening, the double wall to the rear bulkhead and do the laminations on the front bulkhead. And of course, long rounds along the side that still gotta be finished. And of course the tunnel, once we're done with the drivetrain, that will of course be the main stiffener in the whole thing. But we're just gonna have to move on. But I'm wondering, and I'd like to be able to use that watch this channel regularly, wonder if these videos, these uh, tedium and these laminations are interesting enough that I should keep doing them in these small batches or just kind of wait and put a larger video together that show more of the different switches between the different things I'm doing and all the little strengthening features in these laminations. Anyway, wondering what you think about that. And if they put a comment below, I can have any idea of what you're thinking. Anyway, let's go see what we did on laminations in this week's video. Let's go do it. So while this thing is upside down, I decided to go ahead and uh, do some work on some areas that just make it a little more convenient for access. Now, if you remember these uh, lower side air ducts, they were created out of just a paper form and then laminations made over the top of them. So they are a little bit bumpy and lumpy and had to be uh, sanded down and a little body filler put into them to smooth them up. So sand them down and now I'm going to put a layer of fiberglass cloth over it to tie it all, seal it in and bond it to the rest of the structure. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, spread some resin on there and put some real light three and a half ounce cloth on the bottom edge. That is where that little turn back flange is that we created with our uh, metal flashing in the mold. We want to keep that nice and thin because that is an edge that is uh, facing the street and we don't want it to get thicker and thicker there. We want it to stay the same as what the mold described. So that real thin cloth is what we're going to use to bond to that finished fiberglass edge. Then we're going to put a little heavier cloth to cover the whole thing to, like I said, seal in the body filler and keep the straight tied to the floor as well. And that's the way this is going to kind of work. We'll be putting on a layer of fiberglass cloth on the side and then another layer on the bottom, another one on the side. Each time the fiberglass laps over the corner so they bond together very well. So just a matter of, uh, as always, we describe these things. Put your cloth on, saturate it so that it slides a little bit as you will be able to work it to the edges. Got a little bit of radius here that the cloth's going to just stretch too tight on. So put a couple of trims in it little pleat cuts and it'll make it around the corners just fine. And after we had that uh, all laminated, another project here in this whole thing while it was upside down was to jump inside because there is a bond between the front bulkhead and the bottom of the dashboard that needs some lamination done. And of course, working upside down under the dashboard would have been real difficult. So it's really convenient to have the car upside down, throw a bucket in on the roof, sit in there and just do my laminations. And I was gonna edit this part out, but I thought for your uh, entertainment, you would sit to see, looking for some scissors, had to climb out, get back in. I suppose this is what it would be like if you uh, rolled the car and had to go find your cell phone, climb it in there when it's upside down. So trying to figure out what to narrate these animations or what I say animations, narrating these laminations as I do them over and over each week, you're kind of getting the gist of how the process goes by just putting on a small strip of uh, tape and then just increasing the size of those pieces of fiberglass until you get to a full size sheet that covers the bulkhead itself. Now back outside the car, we're going to work on those uh, pesky A pillars that are getting too, way too much flex in them. So putting in some more unidirectional fiberglass toe. 
Now, if you remember this part here out of a mold created kind of a channel. And so we put these toes in before we're going now to the second layer. And I separated this, we're going to call it the second layer, but I separated into two bundles so that we can have less of these fibers to try to press our resin through and saturate. But they're just pushed into that channel. And then when they come out of the channel, they're kind of spread out, flailed out and uh, spread flat. Working on the ceiling of the car. And then as they come through the channel, they come out onto the bottom side of the dash again. Just a matter of just working that resin back and forth. Once it's somewhat saturated, it's time to add the second half of that bundle. And this is kind of a pain because uh, you want to push the resin in there and push the fibers into that channel, but the uh, resin is also a little bit sticky and tries to pull the fibers out. So you just got to work your way slow. Anyway, once you get that channel filled up and it's saturated fairly well, I always cover it with a layer of fiberglass cloth. That helps you consolidate, push all the air out so you just have resin and fiberglass toe. And it gives a good clean surface as well to uh, work on the next layer that comes along. And so once you've uh, filled the channel and consolidated that way, also where that fiber toe comes up and is splayed out on top of the surface here, like on the dashboard we're talking, we also put a layer of fiberglass cloth on there I said consolidates those fibers down and gives us a nice finished surface to uh, be able to sand easily if we want to put another layer on. Now once that uh, fiberglass toe was completely uh, encapsulated with a fiberglass cloth on both sides, we're going to add some unidirectional tape that runs across the roof here where the visor area. I'm going to put 10 layers of this tape in and they just go all the way across to cover that area where the unidirectional toe splayed out so it'll all be tied together as one big uh, continuous framework around this windshield. Now these uh, unidirectional tapes are just like the toes and uh, kind of some thick fibers so you have to work to get a lot of resin into them. And in fact, in this time, we decided to uh, actually get the consolidation roller out and uh, press that resin through it all. And that roller just is made of a bunch of discs that work back and forth and press the air out, press the resin down in. And to top that off, and I'll just say it one more time, all these layers always we put a finishing layer of fiberglass on top, helps to consolidate it and to give us that nice finish if we have to uh, sand it for the next process or just have a nice finish to be finished. So another day and all that is cured, trimmed up a little bit. This next batch of uh, fiberglass unidirectional toe is going to actually not go up underneath the dash, but it is going to make a turn and go onto this little bulkhead, which is kind of a splash guard for the back of the front tire. So to keep that fiberglass from just spanning nothingness, we're going to trim out a little piece of cardstock paper and put it in there, tape in place so that when we bring the toes up, we have something to press it against to get it saturated. So not much to say about this. We've just gone through this whole process of uh, laying these toes in, press them into the channel, splaying out the ends, saturating it. The only thing different here, of course, is we're making that bend going up onto that bulkhead. So same thing, saturated up under there. And of course, cover with cloth to get our final consolidation and uh, clean it up. I keep showing you all these things and going through this whole process, but I've decided to put together a little animation so you can understand it maybe a little bit better. How this whole thing is going to be assembled and created strength out of these unidirectional fibers. 
So in the blue here, we have the original shell or the original lamination that went into the mold and created this A pillar. And then in a previous video, we added this layer, this green. These are these unidirectional fibers or toes that were laid into that little channel that we created. And then now in this video, we are going and we're laying in a second bundle of fiberglass toes. And we also, in each of these layers, have been adding a fiberglass cloth that takes the strength that those unidirectional fibers are creating in that channel and spreading it out to the rest of this arrangement, which is creating the windshield frame as well. And also in this wind, also in this uh, video, we added a third layer of unidirectional fiber toe here in this turquoise. Now after this is all cured and we move on to the next process, we'll be bringing in a little preformed uh, channel, which is going to be where the door will jam against. And so that will be bonded in place. And after that's all bonded, laminated in place and things are ready to go, we will add, of course, a rubber door seal and the window will be bonded in place as well with its rubber seal. And the final thing why we had the whole tub upside down and the convenience of working on the bottom side is to put another couple of layers on the very bottom of the floor plan. Just go ahead and it was all scuffed up, uh, cleaned up and sanded. Just go ahead and lay out our resin to get ready for some cloth. Now you can put cloth down and work your resin through it dry, but it, it makes it a little more difficult. It takes a lot more time to get it fully saturated. So it's always easier to uh, put some resin down and then put the cloth on top of it. Sometimes it seems to be uh, counterintuitive because when it does have resin, the cloth kind of sticks and maybe it doesn't want to move, but it's just a matter of adding a little more resin to get it kind of into a flow state where it'll slide on top of the resin. And we're going to do this floor in uh, four pieces. We got, of course, the big gap in the middle where the tunnel's going to go, but our cloth is only uh, 38 inches wide, so it doesn't quite reach the full length. Going to saturate this front piece and then uh, squeeze it out. Then we'll go get a second piece of cloth and lay that on there. Now, if you remember, there's uh, sections in this floor that are uh, thin that only the fiberglass will meet on. And then we have the one inch thick foam set up in kind of a grid pattern to add some strength to it. So as we go back and forth, um, laminating the bottom of the floor, we'll put a few layers on and those will lap over the edges and tie to the bulkheads and the other parts that are part of this whole construction of this tub and then when we flip the thing over we'll do some couple layers on the inside of the floor and that will just build up the strength through the floor into the thin areas and of course with the foam core same amount of layers but just uh separated by that foam of course and like i said this is uh everything done with it being upside down at least for now we're going to invert this tub and get back to work on some of the top side items. So there you go. Like I said, little tediums of lamination at your viewing pleasure. But do you want to see them this drawn out, as in this video, or a little more rapid fire in multiples of uh, just jumping here and there and all those little strengthening features? Anyway, like I said, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think about that. Anyway, thanks for stopping by today, though, and come back and see us again.